Okay, so welcome back. Before I get out of here, we are going to have the comments. So, Vince1337, ain't that number speak for lead? I don't know. Says on the Life is Neat video, just finished watching the anime Welcome to NHK. As per the line, Welcome to NHK is based on and the pick. Thanks for the anime recommendation. I really enjoyed it. It has inspired me a bit. And I have this song to think, but also the entirety of online dwellings like the old R9K from back in the day. Now, if only I had a Misaki, a Misaki of my own back to supplementing my social shortcomings with anime romance. The whole uh, Misaki character, very unrealistic, unfortunately. But otherwise, how do you make a anime about a guy masturbating in his room interesting <laughs> while he's unemployed and not very social how do you make that interesting i think that misaki was she was like she was the wild card element of the anime that was able to move salto out of his comfort zone and of course just i think that a lot of guys who might resonate with salto as a character and his situation you know i think oftentimes we probably fantasize or have thought about what if we had a woman in our lives or a girl in our lives and you know even as a neat that would make your daily adventures if you want to call it that more exciting right especially a girl that's trying to help you out of your situation um uh, unfortunately misaki was crazy too <laughs> but uh that's the aspect of it that I think is the most unrealistic, but also understandable in terms of just trying to make it more uh, spicy, you know? So user PY8KJ5VE4Y says, what show is this on the Red Comet beat? Um, the Red Comet is what, uh, is what they called Char, who was a mobile suit pilot in the gundam series so it's from gundam that was his nickname the red comet because the grunt units in on the side of zeon which were the bad guys they were these green mechs called zakus but char he had a red zaku that was extremely fast he had like a uh he had like a different elite model zaku that was red so they call him the Red Comet. And um, that's what the beat is named after. His nickname, the Red Comet, because he had the Red Zaku. But it's from uh, Mobile Suit Gundam. So on the Make Babies cult video, Pumpkin <laughs> says, I know a lot of wealthy people want everyone to have kids. They're just wanting more worker slaves for the future. When our generation gets old and geriatric, there will be lower numbers of physically fit young people to fulfill all the jobs that the wealthy corporation owners need. So they want all the poor people to have kids so their kids will be enslaved by the same corporations generation after generation. The wealthy are not giving up their position of power or wealth to help out society. That is why they evade taxes so often. So there is definitely a lot of truth to this. And I don't know if I brought this up in the past, I mean, on, on the video, but if you look at history, there have, throughout, in different times in history, governments have tried to tax bachelors for this exact reason. When a man doesn't have kids and isn't taking care of a woman, it's almost like you're not paying taxes. And, you know, taxes are really just a way for the elites and the government. Now, of course, on one hand, it's kind of a necessity to, you know, pay for all the various government services and whatnot, things like the military and uh, military and shit. But taxes can also be abused and used for inappropriate reasons. But part of the reason why bachelors were taxed is because it's understood that when you don't have kids, and you don't have a wife, it's almost like you're not paying uh, a important tax, which is to make a worker or slave to replace you for the future. You know, this one man 
and one woman can come together and create three, five, six more workers for the future. But if this one man doesn't get a wife and doesn't have kids, then that's a significant thing in terms of what he's not adding to the continuation of the government and the system. Basically, you're not feeding the system the lifeblood that it needs to survive, you know? And so I'm just saying when people say, especially fucking Elon Musk, <laughs> when, when people say stuff like that, you can't fool yourself into thinking that it's coming from the kindness of their heart, you know? And I, I wouldn't say this myself because it's not like I know Elon Musk personally. But I've heard him described as a super psychopath. <laughs> and Elon Musk, from what I can see, I don't think he's a bad person. But I just think he's kind of, um, he's kind of like, I perceive him as being a guy that's all about the bottom line. It's all about the numbers. It's all about progress. It's all about whatever it takes to get the job done doesn't matter what it costs uh doesn't matter who has to be stepped on we got it we got to get the job done you know and i'm not saying that to attack him i just think that's how i kind of perceive him and so if you look at him from his position and he if he wants the system as someone who wants the system to continue to thrive then yeah he wants to he wants everybody making babies you know he wants there to be worker slaves <laughs> <laughs> if you want to call it that, you know, maybe calling them worker slaves is a bit too pessimistic and negative. Hold up. My alarm went off, <laughs> but maybe that sounds a bit too pessimistic. You know, but my point is, just don't think these people are saying this out of the kindness of their heart. It's all about just trying to keep the system, uh, trying to keep the system running, you know. And like my argument in the video is just like, okay, you want people to make babies, but then you're not providing them with the kind of environment where they feel like it makes sense to have children in the first place. You know, you want without giving. And so another unreliable narrator says on the same video, I respect this take a lot. Eventually, I like to have children, but until I can actually properly raise them and give them the tools they need to navigate this world and ultimately just be happy that I was denied in my own childhood, I would be doing them a disservice. I know exactly what you mean by growing up in a just fucking have them environment because that's how I was born too. So I definitely respect your take on it, even if I ultimately have a different opinion. I wish more people would put more thought into it outside of fuck those parasites or just fucking have them. But it seems like that's all it ever is anymore. Good shit, man. Subscribe years ago for the music, but I think you can really go places if you did more discussions like this. That's why I'm doing it. <laughs> oh, man. But, um... Yeah, it's um a big part of the reason why I wouldn't want to have kids now is just that I'm not in position to properly raise them. Um, I don't want to just have kids in any kind of old situation. You know, it's like when I look at people in third world countries, the way they live just in conditions we couldn't even imagine. Some of them struggle to get water consistently. Some of them are not in position to bathe every day, you know, to have basic hygiene products. I've seen videos of people in India, like literally eating cow dung, right? And now apparently some of that is cultural, but I would imagine they wouldn't come to America doing stuff like that. But I digress. But I look at some of these people in these third world countries and I'm like, what possesses a person to say, I need to have kids in this situation? I'm sitting here, I don't have a pot to piss in, but I'm going to reproduce. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. And in the video, I mentioned how data shows that more intelligent people tend to have less children, if any at all. You know, and I think, um, you know, it, it makes sense because it's just straight up dumb <laughs> to have kids to take on a to take on a responsibility that you're not prepared to take care of, you know? 
it's like when you watch those videos, you ever seen those videos, those gym fails where guys are in a gym lifting way more weight than they're really capable of lifting? It's kind of similar, right? It would be stupid for me to go to the gym and rack up 300 pounds <laughs> on the barbell and think about the bench press that shit, right? Like I'm trying to work myself up to 225, but I'm doing it step by step by step. Right. I'm putting uh, like I think right now I'm probably at uh, I don't know, maybe like 160, something like that. But I'm basically I'm doing it step by step. I'm adding a little weight here and there so that I can get my body ready to lift up to 225. I would never go to the like the way people have kids, the way people have kids now. Whether in the first world or the third world, some of these dumb motherfuckers, yes, you dumb motherfuckers, <laughs> it's, it's the equivalent of me going to the gym right now and racking up 300 pounds and then thinking I'm about to lift that shit and then that shit cave my goddamn chest in. <laughs> it's like trying to lift 300 pounds suddenly with no spotter, no straps, <laughs> all alone 4 a.m in the gym <laughs> it's it's just it's absolute foolishness man so on the is there something wrong with the dope virgins video bit hit darmaka says i think some people only see the violent psychopathic side of adult virgins only after they themselves have pushed them to that edge it doesn't happen overnight most male virgins myself included feel that it's our fault for the lack of relationship opportunities, be it sex or whatnot. But the latter view you as some weird, exoteric, bizarre character all because you couldn't get some or never really cared to. But it really depends on how much you value, how much value you give relationships and sex. But the latter view you as some weird, exoteric, bizarre character all because you can get some. And you know, the thing that always trips me out It's just when I think of the crazy motherfuckers that I know that have gotten laid. It that's why this whole discussion always gets to me somewhat because, and there's just one guy. I, I, I can't even lie. I got one friend in particular. I'm not gonna name him, of course. We don't really hang out like that. But this guy is the craziest motherfucker I know, <laughs> and he got like three kids. And it's just it's it's just so weird to me how somebody will look at me as being more abnormal than him when, I mean, this guy is, all, I don't, whoa. <laughs> but it just goes to show the level of importance that we place on a milestone like losing your virginity and engaging in relationships and sex. Like you said, it really depends on how much value you give relationships and sex. But you know, I would argue most adult virgins are harmless, you know, but you do have, I did a good job with that thumbnail, goddamn. <laughs> but, you know, you have those extreme cases like Elliot Rogers and whatnot, and they definitely give uh, virgin males a bad rep, not like uh, we didn't have one already. PlayStation Games All Day says on the Mate Babies Code video, don't repeat the cycle. Most of us weren't meant to be born. Having kids doesn't just burden adults, but the kids that are born into a world that doesn't value them. You're just going to repeat the way slave cycle. And that's exactly what I want to avoid. You know, I don't, I don't want to have kids and then I don't have something to pass down to them. You know, because... The fact is, we live in a competitive world. See, it's easy for someone like Elon Musk or some of these other wealthy people to say, just have kids, make babies, but their kids are coming into the world with a distinct advantage over the kids that me and you would have as average people. Their kids are going to the best schools, eating the best foods, are going to be raised in gated communities, the best environments. They're going to get the best education, you know, and they're not going to be fed a bunch of bull crap. It's like, um, I heard that Steve Jobs didn't allow his kids to, to have an iPhone or something like that or, or tablets. So the guy that made the product that everybody else is just giving their toddlers and kids would never allow his because he knows. He know that's stupid. <laughs> he know that's not right. You know? 
and yeah, you know, I guess that's that's not his fault. But you know what I'm saying is, the wealthy and the elites they have a completely different program that they have their kids in in order to guarantee their success in life. And never mind the job opportunities. You know, Elon Musk, his children are never gonna have to want for a job. Just go to daddy, and he and there's nothing wrong with that. Nepotism isn't a bad thing. It's just it's a privilege, you know. And so I'm just like, we live in this competitive environment. Why the hell would I want to have kids knowing that my children are going to be behind? My children are going to be behind by mouths compared to kids raised in a middle class environment or an upper class environment. I'm not saying you got to be rich to have kids, but me, for me personally, I think that you got to be above paycheck to paycheck. If you live in paycheck to paycheck, <laughs> I don't think you make enough money to where having kids makes it. But it's not my choice to make. Whatever. You can be homeless, fit and all addict and have 10 kids. I don't give a fuck. It's not my choice. That's just my suggestion. <laughs> I suggest you don't have kids when you're a homeless, fit and all addict. But that's just me. Black Cell Neat says, yo, Chad, are you an anti-natalist? And then Redo Direct says, anti-natalist, fucking legacy. That's from the wizard, the uh, what, the wizard song? But I don't consider myself an anti-natalist. I think, you know, it just sounds good in a song. <laughs> but I don't consider myself an anti-natalist because I think anti-natalists are adamant about people not having kids. And that's not really my stance. My thing is more so... I think people should be people should be more conscientious about who they have children with and how capable they are of raising children and providing for them and ensuring that they're going to be raised well and are going to be able to have a good chance to be successful in life. That's my main thing. I'm just against broke dumbasses in the hood, in the projects, in the trailer parks, in third world countries having kids that they can't even take care of, that they can barely take care of themselves. You live in miserable conditions and you're reproducing. That's what I don't like. I'm just like, especially in first world countries where we have we have access to so many opportunities. To me, it just makes sense that before you have kids, you should at least set yourself up into a better position in life so that you can provide them with better opportunities so that they can actually compete with their peers for the limited, you know, job opportunities that are going to that are going to be available toward to them, you know? Because just for example, uh, any job or career path you can think of, you know, there are only so many spaces, spots, or there are going to be available. So my thing is the better a kid's parents and their environment and how they're raised, the better chance they're going to have of being able to fulfill their dreams, whatever that might be. But as far as saying, I don't think the human race should propagate. We should just like, just everybody stop reproducing. That's not, that's not me. That's not my stance because you look at myself for instance, right? I love my life. I love being alive. I enjoy life. But then you have some people who are born and they don't feel that way. Some people are just just seem to be naturally inclined towards being a malcontent, which is like the opposite of me. And so I can't be an anti-natalist because that would be denying the people who are appreciative and thankful for being born and being able to enjoy life, you know. But at the same time, I can under I can understand the argument of forcing somebody into life and the world when they don't really have a choice and then you have to deal with everything that comes with it. 
And so these are some comments that were left on the red comment beat. Uh, Abe some says, dude, every beat feels like an 80s sci-fi anime. Fuck yeah. I call it space trap. <laughs> but I like that too. And Kimo Sabi says, this is that far out. He, Black Cell Neat says, home of the dopest beats. Of course. I have been putting out a lot of beats um, recently. Because I'm, most of the production I've been doing has been, you know, reserved for Robot Music 3. Uh, but you're going to see more beats coming out soon, uh, especially like some more space trap stuff. And so on the fear of approaching girls video, Terry Fowler says, if you bet a hundred against yourself, then if you get the date, you have to spend that on the date. But if you get rejected, you can buy whatever with it. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. But look, I'm serious. If anybody out there, <laughs> if anybody out there wants to, wants to call my bluff, Call my bluff. Send me a hundred dollars, and I will record myself going to the mall and asking out one girl. <laughs> if if you got deep pockets like that, and you want to call my bluff, I'm telling you, I do it. But a hundred dollars, one approach. And so on the same video, Omni Snow says, "There's a girl who works at the local store. I've been debating going and asking out for months." My girlfriend has encouraged me to try, but I feel so anxious and self-conscious. I now think I'll give it a try, though. Thanks for the mind food. And then No Name says, my girlfriend has encouraged me to try. What? And then Epic Minecraft Fail says, what? And then I say, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Seriously, like, you got a girlfriend, but wait a minute. There's a girl. Maybe you're a lesbian girl. There's a girl who works at the. Maybe you're a lesbian girl and you have a girl who's a friend. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, bro. <laughs> but that's just kind of weird. Normally, the guys who already have a girlfriend aren't worried about asking out the cute cashier girl, but whatever. So around the beast, around the best says on the same video, just approach the girl who looks at you like you're a piece of furniture, bro. It's literally pointless to approach women who aren't into me. Um, for the most part, yeah, I mean it's uh you like I said, you got like a ninety nine percent chance of of rejection. And then Omni Snow says the answer is always no until you ask. I think Omni Snow might be a girl. <laughs> That's something, that's something that, you know, a, a girl would say or a, a, a blue pill, uh, number. but you know what? It's, it's true. It's true. The answer is always no until you ask. I'm not trying to discourage guys from approaching girls and whatnot. I'm just laying out the facts. So Omni Snow, this is what I asked you directly because I talked about this in the video. <laughs> now you say that. You say that, but if me and you were in the mall, <laughs> if me and you were in the mall and, and we saw girls and I said, I would approach them or I would approach a girl, would you bet a hundred dollars that I'm going to get rejected or that I'm going to be accepted or that I'm going to get the number? How would you bet? You would bet against me. And the only reason I bring that up is because I don't like when people don't understand the attitude of guys like around the best, like that pessimism, that doubt is for good reason, because it's easy to say the answer is always no until you ask. But if you had to actually put skin in the game, if you had to actually put money on it, you too would bet against him because you know that more than likely he's going to get rejected. And so Hellbreaker says, LMAO, why would I ever be afraid of someone so much weaker than me? LMAO, oh. And then Ghostface 10 says, a lot of fears aren't rational. Well, you know, I think the whole thing about fear of approaching girls and talking to girls, it's not like a, it's not a, a fear of physical violence or you're going to be physically hurt, you know? It's like, if, if I, for instance, as a muscular, fit, handsome man, if some 5'5 five, five skinny girl attacked me 
you know, I wouldn't be afraid. I'd be shocked, but I wouldn't be afraid because I know that, you know, she can't physically overtake me. She can't beat me in a fight. I wouldn't even have to fight her seriously. You know, I could just restrain her and push her away, right? So it's not it's not about physical violence or the threat of physical violence. Um, I think, excuse me. Now, in fact, this is a subject that I need to research deeper because I think the fear that's associated with approaching girls and talking to girls, I think it's very interesting, you know? And I think in a lot of ways, it's more of a social fear. I don't think it's a fear of physical violence and those types of consequences. I think it's a fear of social consequences to be publicly rejected by a girl and what that can lead to. Um, and I also have a theory that it's kind of a, a territorial thing where I think part of the fear comes from the thought or the belief that, you know, that girl might have a boyfriend or she might already be claimed by another man. So maybe, and again, I'm just theorizing here. But I think that's part of where that fear stems from, right? That it's not the girl you have to worry about. It's, you know, what, how would, if her man is right around the corner, if she has a boyfriend or a husband and what if it gets back to him? You know, I think that's part of it. But again, I think that the fear of approaching women is very interesting and something that I want to research more deeply later on, maybe on another podcast. So Cole McGrath 2619 says on the why I'm voting for Donald Trump video, the establishment is really going after Trump. He might be in prison while winning the presidency. Here's the most thug life thing about it. He could then give himself a presidential pardon and get away scot-free. Trump 2024, baby. Yeah, I'm voting for Trump. You know, I don't see any other guy or any other candidate that I see we're voting for. Definitely not Biden. Like I said, Everything got worse after Biden became president. You know, I'm not a Trump stand, but that's just what it is. And so Pumpkin says, I don't vote, but if I did, I'd probably vote for Trump as well. Biden now may screw me over. My company gave me a 4% raise last year, which did nothing for me when that is less than half of what inflation bursted through. Then Biden forced me to get a vaccine. I never want it. On top of that, I'm going to have to pay for the rest of my life to help other people's debt because of Biden. Yeah, and you look at, you look like with the whole immigration thing, the money that's being used to pay for these quote unquote asylum seekers, that's taxpayer money. Um, I think uh, I've heard different, different uh, numbers, but I think like in New York, Everything that's going on with the asylum seekers or illegal immigrants is going to cost taxpayers like four billion dollars. You know, so all this shit is going on. And I also saw that I don't, I'm not sure how true this is. And, uh, you know, I'm not even going to talk about it because anytime I talk about needles, <laughs> I get in trouble. But base, basically, I saw something that said that we pay for that, too. Or you pay for that. I don't pay. <laughs> I'm broke. Uh, but yeah, man. Biden became president and everything got worse. And then Joey IRC says, best analogy I've heard about the Republican Party so far. The Republican Party is like a plane with a suicidal, maniacal pilot at the controls. And they're all cheering him on as he takes the plane into a crash dive heading for a mountain. I mean, what could go wrong? You know, I think in a way... People back in Trump was kind of a, a, a act of desperation. The thought of having somebody that was outside of the establishment. And I think part of the reasoning, because I've heard people say this, that people saw Donald Trump as a grenade, so to speak. Like, we don't know what he's going to do, but he's not one of them. So as long as we take him and throw him in the office... There's going to be something is going to happen. So I think in a sense, it getting behind Trump for some people was kind of an act of desperation. But again, I'm just comparing side by side here. You know, you can say he's a maniacal pilot 
or, uh, or or maybe the I don't know. Maybe you're not talking about Trump specifically. I'm assuming you are, but the I'm just looking at the simple fact that while Trump was president, things were better than when Biden was president. Biblical figure said he responds to him. He says an economically protectionist anti-immigration and nationalist platform is not the death sentence to America. You think it is. And it is in fact the exact solution needed to bring this country back from the demographic brink it's about to cross that our parents and grandparents were tricked into voting for starting with the Hart Seller Immigration Act of 1965. And his sneeze says the mountain is a village of <laughs> I'm not gonna say it, you see it. <laughs> um But yeah, man, like my whole thing is is very simple. It is very simple, bro. When Trump was president. America was better when Biden was president or while he's president too many things have gotten worse and for me it's just it's that simple it's like if you have a, a baby's if you look for a babysitter babysitter a babysitter b you take the child to babysitter a and you go pick your child up and he has spaghetti all on his shirt because he was just eating a lot of spaghetti and having fun. Okay, whatever. Then you go to babysitter B. And then you pick your child up. And he got a black eye. <laughs> and he's missing a tooth. And some of his hair got pulled out. And this and that. It's, it's that simple. You got to go with babysitter A. Yeah, babysitter A wasn't perfect. He got messy with the food. But at least he didn't get beat up. <laughs> Right, at least he didn't get physically abused. To me, it's just it's that simple. Now, again, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I don't understand. I'm not like a, a political analyst or anything like that. But I think sometimes you just gotta use your intuition and your common sense. I was happier here. I was unhappier there. Let me go back here. And that is the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed that. So I'm going to tell you what the next podcast is going to be about.